and I'm a PhD student at Atri. And as a part of my PhD work, I am doing research on Meristica swamps. So this is a good example of a Meristica swamp around us. This is Katlekan, one of the oldest swamps in the Western Ghats landscape of Uttar Kannada. Uh, I've been coming for about a year now to try and understand multiple facets of this ecosystem. So one, the biodiversity that we find here. So looking at the odonates, the butterflies, the birds, mammals, fishes, reptiles, amphibians, what are we finding in these swamps? Then also trying to understand the water quality because swamps actually play a major role in holding clean water. Uh, so what they do is actually dirty water flows into the swamp many times and the swamp roots hold the water in and that purifies them. So the root system actually stops the, all the floating substances from going downstream and it holds them in place in this uh, swampy area. Swamps are all connected, from, you know, connected by the streams. They form the lifeline of their entire hydrological cycles in that particular region. And then the free-flowing free stream downstream, we find the cleaner water is going. So communities that live downstream, biodiversity downstream, they all get cleaner water. So these are really important ecosystem services of swamps, but people haven't looked into it much. A lot of local communities live around these swamps. They use the water from these swamps. They collect fruits, they collect timber, they collect, uh, and we call them NTFP products, so non-timber forest products. They just come to enjoy the swamps. Sometimes they pray in the swamps because they're sacred. And all of these activities go on without really knowing about why these are ecologically such important ecosystems. Unfortunately, swamps like Katlekan are under a lot of threat these days. So the major source of threat is, of course, anthropogenic. Uh, people are the biggest threat and you know, they can also play a big role in conservation, but they also are a big threat to swamps. Two major things. One, we have roads. So linear infrastructure like roads and railways that run really close to these kind of delicate systems can lead to a lot of damage. One, it opens up the edge of the system. Uh, so the forest is usually closed canopy. But here what we have is right on the edge of Katlikan, there's a road. So it's opened up the forest to intrusion. So invasive species can enter more easily. Humans can enter more easily. Uh, we find a lot of trash in Katlikan, for example. And then what happens is when people keep coming in and littering, we also see the biodiversity reduces. The, you know, the wild animals that live here, like the lion-tailed macaque, an endangered primate that's found in the Western Ghats, they're usually found in these forests. But if we cut the canopy and we open it up, then it disturbs these species and it reduces the food source for them. So they, instead of coming in these swamps, they look elsewhere for food. And that means that these seeds aren't getting uh, dispersed or they're not being cracked. The arrel around the seed, the red coat, is not being eaten. So the seed, does, even if it falls, it doesn't uh, effectively germinate. So we need that cracking by the hornbill or the chomping by the macaque in order to break it open, which allows the seed to germinate. So Arika is a cash crop and it's a major crop here in Uttar Kannada district especially. So when Arika nut plantations either up or right next to a swamp withdraw water, we see the water table shrinking in the swamp, especially in the dry season, where there's suddenly not enough water to cover these roots. And when that happens, the trees aren't able to actually survive in the um, summer and the dry season. And that's a big problem because these are really rare trees. So Meristika fatua, the tree I'm sitting on right now, is actually uh, endangered by the, according to the IUCN red list. And that means that uh, there are only 250 trees in left in the wild. So water is really key. Water plays a major role. These roots that you see, they're specialized so that the tree can breathe in water. If there's not enough water, there's not going to be enough supply for these trees to survive. And even these giant trees that date back to the Cretaceous period, they're not going to be around anymore. Jimna Krantara Kanarika is another swamp obligate tree that we find in these swamps. And uh, even in Katlikan, you'll see it with its funny little knee roots. It's known as Vandanki Mara in Kannada because it looks like the number one, the way the root is, root, uh, is shaped. Another thing, of course, is with proximity to roads and houses, we have a lot of uh, pollutants influx and this is going to affect the water quality. So it makes it worse to drink, which can also impact the communities that live downstream, but also biodiversity. Uh, Uttar Kannada is a stronghold for swamps right now. We have over 120. Many of them are not known. 
many are only known to the forest department and some are sacred some are not sacred so there's a lot of difference in how much these swamps are valued by people or known about by people so how can we protect these swamps now we know what the threats are but what are the real ways we can actually save them from completely going extinct we have to go back to communities if we're trying to really protect these swamps and many of the people we've talked to have mentioned that the root systems hold water in which is why in the dry season they get water in their houses we need to understand the condition saplings require to survive and the biggest threat to sapling survival you know is a big amount of water coming in going to wash them away or are they going to be okay are there specific you know herbivores that only eat saplings preferentially so all of this needs to be researched so that we can better pro protect the saplings and thus regrow this kind of a forest i mean these are incredibly old forests incredibly rare forests and it's part of our national heritage it's part of our national resources we need to save them in order to at least be able to say that you know we have one of the rarest ecosystems in the world we are some of the oldest trees in the world and we are actually able to preserve it in a country that now has the world's largest population